Five years ago this month, I decided that I was done dyeing my hair forever. I had spent over 25 years dyeing my hair. I was so sick and tired of spending all that time and money on hair that only looked good three days out of every month, the day that I dyed it and two days afterward. Did I ever consider going gray at all during those 25 years? Yes, I did many times, but I didn't do it because I was afraid. I was afraid I wouldn't like my hair texture. I was afraid I wouldn't like my hair color. I was afraid that it might hurt my career. I was afraid that I might look old or like I'd let myself go or like I didn't have any money. Well, I'm happy to tell you today that none of my fears came true and I'm going to share with you the top seven things that surprised me the most about going gray. Hi, I'm Katie Emery, the founder of katiegoesplatinum.com, a website completely devoted to the subject of gray hair. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. I am so happy to have you here today. Now, before we get started, I did want to mention that if you like this content, if you find it fun, helpful, or informative, please do press the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you. So today I'm going to share with you what surprised me the most, both physical and emotional things about going gray. And I would love to hear from you in the comments what your experience has been like. Please let me know because we're all different, everybody's hair is different, and everybody's emotional makeup is different. So let me know, I'd love to hear from you. Number one, my hair loss stopped. This was the best outcome I ever could have hoped for. For years, I had been losing tons of hair every day. I had to install a special hair catcher in my shower. I had to clean out my hairbrush multiple times a day because of all the hair. It was gross and upsetting. I thought maybe I would go bald, so I was really unhappy about the situation. And for years, I thought it was menopause and I didn't give it much thought. Well, I know now that in my case, it was not menopause. It was, in fact, hair dye because the moment I stopped dyeing, my hair stopped falling out. It was like a miracle. My hair is thicker now than it has been since I was a teenager. I am thrilled about it. And it's not just me. I did a gray hair study last year that I'll link to in the show notes below. And over 25% of the respondents said that their hair became noticeably thicker after they stopped dying. Did this happen to you too? I would love to know. And if it did not happen to you, I'm going to link to my friend Jolie's fantastic article about hair loss. And that might help you get to the bottom of why you might still be experiencing hair loss even after going gray. Number two, my dull, frizzy hair became shiny and smooth. During the last 10 or so years of dyeing my hair, it had become super dull and dry and frizzy. So I spent a lot of money and time battling those problems. I got keratin treatments, I bought shine sprays, and anytime I had a major event, I would have to fork out the money at the salon to get a blowout so that my hair could look somewhat decent. The dullness was what really got to me because my hair had no life to it, no dimension. But now I don't have to do anything to get my hair to be shiny and smooth. It grows out of my head that way. It's like a miracle and also one of the best outcomes I could have hoped for. I am saving so much money and time and not putting chemicals on my head. It is a win-win-win situation. And it's not just me. Over 41% of respondents said their silver hair was much shinier than their dyed hair. And over 20% said that it was smoother. That's pretty great considering that we've always been told our gray hair will be coarse and wiry. For the first First time in my adult life, I can air dry my hair now and it looks good. I don't have to do much to it. If I ever do end up with any frizz, which really only happens if it's a little humid in Los Angeles, which occasionally does happen now, I just put a little Verb Ghost Oil or Quicksilver Hair Squalane Oil. I'll link to those below. I just put a little of that on, smooth my hair down, and it's fine, but it's not like the old days where it was a complete battle. Number three, I love my natural hair color. This was not what I expected ever. At all. The idea of gray hair when you're younger just sounds so drab and dull. Gray sounds like prison garments worn by the women of cell block age. I was a little worried. What would my hair look like? What if I didn't like it? But now I love my natural hair color. I am thrilled with it. Even five years after I started this transition, when I catch my hair in the mirror or in a window, I stop and I marvel at how much I like it. It's like having Christmas tinsel or liquid mercury growing out of my head. I did not expect this at all. I didn't expect that my natural dark color would still be visible in the underneath layers. That was not what I pictured. I didn't picture how much depth and dimension and movement it would have. I feel really lucky and I never could have predicted it. Nobody can predict what their gray hair will look like until all of their dye has been cut off. You really just can't tell and nobody can tell. Don't let anybody fool you. No hairdresser 
or friend or app can tell you what your natural color is going to be. And let me also tell you, Mother Nature knows what she's doing. I really think that most women's natural hair color is flattering to their skin tone. I hope you're in the same boat as me and that you're very happy with your natural hair color. But if you're not, don't worry, there are things you can do. First of all, many of you can go back to dyeing. There's nothing shameful about that. But if you can't go back to dyeing, don't worry, I've got you covered. I will link below to an article I did all about what to do if you hate your gray hair. It has lots of fantastic tips that should help you. And I'd also like to remind you, if you found this video helpful so far, please do make sure to give it a like. That really helps. Thank you so much. Number four, I stopped worrying about aging so much. After I stopped dyeing my hair, I started thinking really hard about why I had felt so much pressure to keep covering it for years past when I was ready to stop. And really a lot of it was due to this fear of looking old. Now it seems kind of ridiculous because my own hair gave me evidence that gray hair was not just for the super elderly. After all, I started getting gray hair when I was 15. And looking back, I suspect I was probably fully gray under all that dye by about age 30. I started thinking hard about why I was so afraid of getting old. After all, as they say, it's better than the alternative. By age 50 or so, many of us have had friends who've passed away. Wouldn't they rather be here on this earth with family and friends getting older together, even with wrinkles and gray hair or any of these other signs that people associate with old age? So I had to think hard about that and why I was so afraid of it. Thinking about these friends who passed away before their time really made me decide that I had to enjoy every day here on earth and stop fretting so much about my face changing, my hair changing, my body changing. I wanna live in the present. And I want to live like every day here on earth is a gift. As one of my readers put it, which I thought was so eloquent, going gray pushes you into the present. It kind of forces you to accept who you are now instead of always chasing who you used to be. And I'm really trying to do that. I feel like I have done that. And it's really taken a big mental weight off my shoulders. Now we're getting about halfway through the list. So make sure to stay to the end because I've got two very unexpected benefits that to me are some of the most important ones on this journey. And I hope you'll enjoy them. Number five, the Silver Sister community. They estimate that over 75% of the people on earth dye their hair. So a lot of us often find when we go gray that we're some of the only people in our friend group who are doing it. It really depends on where you live. So I worried that I would feel isolated while I was going gray, but that has definitely not been the case. First of all, I did something I actually don't totally recommend, which is when I decided I was going to go gray, I posted it on my Facebook account. And the reason I don't recommend that is unless you have very supportive and kind friends and family, you could get some negative feedback. So you have to really think before you do this. Luckily for me, I do have supportive friends and my friend Kim reached out to me and she let me know that she too had started going gray and she was about six months into her transition. I am so grateful to my friend Kim because she's the one who taught me to go onto YouTube and to look for inspiring women who'd gone gray before me. She taught me all about the Facebook and Instagram gray hair support network. And I think if she hadn't done that, it would definitely have been a lot harder for me. But because of her, I joined some Facebook gray hair support groups like the one I belong to now, Silver Revolution. I'm an admin there, so please stop by. And she turned me on to other ladies I should follow on Instagram and YouTube. And because of that, I really started to get to know other women who are going gray. And even though a lot of these friendships started off only online, a lot of them have transitioned into real life friendships. It's been fantastic because once you've been through this experience, it really does create a bond. The main thing that really helps is seeing other women's transition pictures and getting their encouragement and support, telling them your problems, getting feedback, and getting advice about certain products to try. Although I do have to say, be a little cautious with that because everybody's hair is different and some people are not giving good advice. Another cool thing is if you have gray hair and you go to a convention or a party and you don't know anybody, it really helps because it's a great icebreaker. Either people are going to want to talk to you about your decision to go gray. I sometimes have been known to walk up to other women with gray hair and use that as an icebreaker to get to know them and I've actually formed some friendships that way too. It's a really cool tool to have in your pocket if you want to get to know people. If you feel isolated and you're not getting to meet a lot of other women who've gone through this, you can go on Facebook, join our group Silver Revolution or join my newsletter or comment on my blog. A lot of women get to know each other that way and that really helps. And let me tell you, Silver Sisters are the best. I have never met such a supportive group of women.
Number six, positive emotional side effects. Even though there were so many wonderful physical side effects of going gray, what I wasn't really expecting were the wonderful emotional side effects of going gray. And they have been a huge benefit. I actually got my first hint of this on the night that I decided to stop dying. I can't even begin to describe how free I felt. I felt like a huge weight had been taken off my shoulders. It felt truly liberating. Honestly, until that very moment, I hadn't realized how much all that stressing about my roots showing was weighing me down. So I felt fantastic and euphoric. And that feeling of euphoria honestly lasted me the whole two and a half years of my transition. And I still feel really great. I'm an anxious person and going gray despite all those fears I had and having it still turn out great was really liberating to me and made me start questioning what other fears do I have that aren't true. As my therapist used to say, fear is false evidence appearing real. And being an anxiety ridden person, I do tend to get myself worked up about things. Luckily, I'm also a stubborn person, so I usually do try to push those fears down and still move forward. But the gray hair barrier was one that I resisted for decades. So it was kind of like a domino effect. Once I got rid of that barrier against gray hair, it broke down other barriers in my life too. And I'm definitely not alone in this. I've heard from many other women who've experienced these great feelings of liberation and freedom and other positive things since they went gray. I'm going to link in the video description box below to my post called The Surprising Truth About Going Gray so you can read other women's feelings and experiences. 90% of them are positive. Some of them are negative. I wanted to show both sides and I think you'll get a kick out of it. So definitely check that out after this video is done. And now on to number seven, which is highly related to number six. Going gray was a catalyst for other changes in my life. I started my gray hair transition about three years after one of the most traumatic experiences in my life, the near death of one of my children. Thank God he's okay now. And because of that traumatic event, I had gone through a period of depression and anxiety. When I was going through this period of depression and anxiety, I did not feel like me. I'm normally a very happy, creative, and self-confident person. So when I started my gray hair transition, I was kind of coming out of that. I was starting to feel a little bit better, but not quite like myself. But let me tell you there is no confidence booster on earth that is more powerful than having the balls to go to work every day in Los Angeles with a head full of calico hair, a gigantic glaring skunk stripe, and blorange ends. If you can do that, you can do anything. And that, crazy as it sounds, really did push me back into who I used to be because if I could do that, I knew I could do anything. That self-confidence that I got from going gray boosted my creativity in ways that I hadn't seen in years. I used to do more photography. I used to do a lot of things that fulfilled my soul and I had to kind of stop doing that. But after I decided to go gray, I started my blog and I met other creative types, started learning new skills. It really did unleash something. And as I keep saying, it's not just me. I've met women who, because they went gray, they made other positive changes in their life. Some of them left a marriage that was very unhappy. Some of them started new careers as models, as actors, whatever. I mean, the sky is the limit. And going gray forces other positive changes as well. Many of us find that we start eating healthier and we start exercising more. I also found that I started thinking more about what chemicals I put on my body. So now I'm trying to use more clean beauty products, clean hair products. I'm not perfect, but I'm getting there. Now, if you're on the fence about going gray and even after all this positivity, you're still not sure that you want to go gray, definitely check out my video, The Pros and Cons of Gray Hair. That way it will give you both sides of the story and you can see if going gray really is something that you want to do. I know you'll enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching and please do like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much.